we collide, we come together. If we don't, we'll always be apart. I'll take a bruise, I know you're worth it, but when you hit me, hit me hard. These fantastic lyrics were created by Simon Neal, a young guy along with two brothers who had the belief and determination that they could create a global rock band, and they sure did in the Biffy Clyro. And I'm so glad they have agreed to be my backing group for today. <laughs> um, this is wow, by the way, wow. Um, today, I want to share how music has inspired me and has framed sequences within my life. Um, I also want to share collisions that have brought me here today. And I want to share some of the, the biggest collisions, past and present. And that's where my commitment to regeneration comes from. Who remembers this? July 2009, 20,000 people descended in Kilmarnock Town Centre. And I'm proud to say that's me at the front with the red mark on. We came together because we were in a major collision. We came together to save 700 jobs at a local bottling plant. 700 jobs that had been created by the hands of a great entrepreneur, an entrepreneur of greatness, a man who, as far as I am concerned, put, put Kilmarnock on the map. And that was the great Johnny Walker, an inspiration to all. But we were in a collision with a major PLC. And during that collision, we basically failed to save those 700 jobs. Those 700 jobs that were in Kilmarnock Town Centre, in a deprived postcode area, where we had youth unemployment, social issues and health issues. How could that happen yet again? Well, what do you do? Do you do nothing? Well, not in my book, because that's just not an option. What you do is stop the collision and try and negotiate with that major PLC. And that's what we did. But for me, it wasn't about a developer or entrepreneur gaining control of a site. It was about gaining control of a community. And I'll explain a bit more about that later. I want to talk to you about this picture. I have had major collisions in my life, like many of you. But my first collision was coming into this earth, as my mother said, because I had a near miss a major health problem. And if it hadn't been for the doctors and the nurses, I wouldn't be here today. So I did collide at a early, very early age with the National Health Service. I was brought up in Onthank, in that same deprived postcode area, as I have just mentioned about the bottling plant. It was a great community then, and it's a great community now. Not long after the march, I came across this painting in the Dick Institute in Kilmarnock. And that painting depicted a grey shadowy house with a wee yellow ball. And I was astonished when I got speaking to the artist, June McCall, that the painting's name, and it was on it, was On Thank Yellow Ball. Because that picture depicted to me, me as a child playing in the streets of On Thank with a ball. I was brought up with a father who was a bricklayer and my mother was a hosiery worker. And they had the belief that any child, including me, could be the best we could possibly be. But that was quite difficult for me because not being an academic, being that fat kid, I, you know, I found life really, really diffi difficult and I, I was bullied at school. But I had a release and that release was this. We went on annual holidays every year to Aberdeen, the city of lights as far as I was concerned. It had cowboy hats with you know, your Stetsons and your shiny boots. What we had there was we had wealth creation, we had oil, we had aspirations, and I had this, hence the tartan. <laughs> I knew that saw would come in handy today. I had the Bay City Rollers because they, again, had the dedication and the aspiration that they could be the first Scottish boy band to hit the globe. And what I would give for an rendition just now of shang lang is nobody's business. <laughs> These were my two releases. But it was more important than that, because my local community then was facing decline. Decline in post-1960s booms. We had the lights of Massey Ferguson shutting down. We had three-day weeks. We had strikes, and we had candlelight to do our homework by. It was absolutely horrendous. So I was going through a phase of North, North Scotland meeting South West Scotland. 
which was a really difficult time for many of us kids to engage with. So what do you do? I get educated brilliantly at Kilmarnock Academy, but I was off to the bright city lights with the new gold dream. The new gold dream by Simple Minds, and that city who was miles better. They were going through a process of regeneration. They were regenerating old buildings that had been built by the hands of entrepreneurs and creating new artistic, shiny buildings. They were creating a new culture, a new environment. It was, it was like, it was so dark here and so shiny up there. It was unbelievable. And as I said, Simple Minds is my favorite band. Big hair, eyeliner, not much has changed, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> but there were a song, a song on that album. And that album, it meant so much to me. And this, the song was called, Don't You Forget About Me. And that song was so pertinent because of this. Destruction. Every night, I would come home in the train to Kilmarnock, get off the train and be faced with Andrew Bartley Railway Locomotives. Andrew Bartley Railway Locomotives was a global Scot who built industrial engines to take across the world. India, Africa, you name it, it was there. This was a building that I saw in decline and it was absolutely ridiculous. How could a community a community that had built this be in such decline? Was it government policy? Was it just not loved? It was a mixture of basically everything. So I was going through a major collision at that stage and I was off again because this lady here told me to work hard for my money. I was off to London where the pet shop boys had told me there were opportunities. I was off and I had a Dell Boy moment when I thought Bougelou Nouveau was a new fashion range and not a nice red wine. <laughs> However, the serious fact of the matter was, I had had a good education in Kilmarnock, but I was off to actually work in the finance houses in London. And that took me um, into why I'm so passionate about entrepreneurs. Um, I helped grow businesses through cash flow finances from Aberdeen right down to London, Bradford, Leeds, loads of different cities and towns. But there was a collision about to happen and that collision was in 1992 with the ERM crisis, when interest rates went through the roof and loads of businesses were going to wall. At the same time, my father had the, Cl the Clin Group, a small contracting business at that time. But the thing for me then was how important the health service was. Because I had clients in that bank, family businesses, that basically were suffering from depression. There were actually some people wanting to take their own life that recession was so bad. So again, if it hadn't been for the health service, quite honestly, most of them wouldn't be here. As for myself, well, I worked too hard for my money. I was about to collide. I collided with my health, collapsed, and had a, a near life death experience. And again, if it hadn't been for the National Health Service, I wouldn't be here today. So what do you do? You come back home because Freddie tells you the show must go on. Because if the show doesn't go on and communities don't come together, we have absolutely nothing. I come back to this. I come back with the belief that in taking a community with you, you can make change. And that change is the regeneration of old buildings. Like that, where Drake 206, who was built for the Second World War effort, is now in situ at Bartley House in Colmarnock. It has people living there, it has people working there, it has people with small businesses, they shop in the town centre. It's about an opera house who sings again, who for 22 years lay derelict in the middle of a town centre. It's about working with people at centre stage, where you come and get a social enterprise to do your opening ceremony and not the private sector. It's about working with the school kids to design the window decals, depicting the history of that building and how it was burnt by fire in 92, but they're actually making the history and the regeneration of that building. Go and see the windows, and you'll see it's the kids that actually designed them. It's about this. It's about taking a 23-acre site of an industrial devastation and creating a unique international hub. Based on enterprise, driven by entrepreneurs, driven through Heather Dunk's new college, there should be jobs for all, as Lord Hawkey said, it's about youth with hope, 
Why can't we have the first youth with hope development in Scotland, raising the profile of Scotland, that every single person that rents a unit in there or has a business is required to employ a youth with hope, whether it's one, 10 or 20. That's the new age. It's about collaboration and people working together. It's about the halo. It's about it creating as a destination for youth to come and work and have hope. It's about belief. As Johnny Walker and Andrew Bartley said, they wanted to be the best and they believed they could be the best. And every single person in this audience today, students, lecturers or whoever, you can be the best. You just have to have, as I call it, that I, you can attitude. Barack Obama has a yes, we can. We have I, you can. It's about being different. It's about who would have a real locomotive in the reception and a pink cow rug? Well, I do. <laughs> I dare to be different. It's about being pioneering. It's about when people say you can't do it, just do it. We went to Toll Cross in the mid-90s when people wouldn't go and build, and you now have the Commonwealth Games there. And dare I say, Sir Alexander Fleming came from Darville. He had the belief. It's about taking people with you. It's about not one individual. It's about not a government. It's about people coming together. It's about the social capital. It's about time businesses realised they need to actually redefine the meaning of profit. Profit is the social capital in people. When hundreds of people turn up to a community consultation on a 23-acre site because they have the belief and they have the know-how and they'll take it to the next stage. It's not about some developer coming in and saying, thank you very much, that's what you're getting. It's about the belief. It's about the college next door students having the belief that they can go to college and come out and have a destination in that halo to have a job opportunity. It's about working with the History Society and getting the information and using that in the old buildings, as I call the crown jewels, to create a new future for our youth. It's about working with the sports department. Everybody in sports and health should actually be involved in a HALO project because the experience they can give us is unbelievable. It's about perseverance. Don't give up. Days can be long and days can be hard, but you just go on with it. You will collide with bureaucracy. I do it every day with planning departments and I just move on. It creates a soul and it creates a new economy. So when they say it can't be done, just smile and move on. A famous World War II general said, we are not retreating, we're advancing in a different direction. And that was General MacArthur, a World War II general from America. I take that motto with me, because my father lent me that motto at a very young age. I'm now going to go back to this yellow ball. We heard from Lord Hockey earlier about how he wanted to have a Youth With Hope strategy and a global message leaving from this fantastic event today. My parents gave me the belief that I could be whatever I wanted to be, but I needed my health. I needed you guys. This ball here today is going to change the world. As you know, I encourage enterprise. I work with Sir Tom Hunter and his eSpark model and Lord Hockey. And this is a young company that actually you can buy these from. You can put your message on it and for birthdays or Christmases or whatever. But I dare to be different. This yellow ball I put messages on and send it to politicians, end users who would come into a development. I send it to local authorities. I send it with a pertinent message because this country is open for business. Ayrshire is open for business. And we all need to keep working together. So what I'm going to say to you today is, the next time that you see a boy or a girl with a ball, and preferably a yellow ball, remember the girl who dared to be different, and the girl who dared to, to dream. And she still believes it's you and me until the end of time. Thank you. Thank you.